All right, uh, thank you for joining. I'm here with Greg Whiteley, director of the documentary MIT about Mitt Romney's multiple uh, campaigns for president. Uh, you achieved this amazing access. They let you into his family's life. You had very, very personal moments, even in, uh, including the, the moment when they come home after the first time they come home, the Secret Service drops them off after losing the election and they're alone in their home for the first time. How did you, how did you get permission to do this, first of all? Um, I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure how this happened. This I, is not a rec replicatable model. No, you know, I, I don't think so. Um, the Romneys are polite to a fault, mm -hmm. and what I learned was um, they have a difficult time saying no, especially if they discern that you may not have a place to sleep that night. <laughs> uh, they will, they will uh, look for a place for you to sleep. So my strategy was basically to just film and tell all the other uh, campaign staff and reporters had retired to where they were staying, and you know, Mitt or Ann or one of the brothers would look at me and go, uh, where you need a place to stay? And so that's kind of where a lot of the uh, best stuff happened for me. Um, I was filming just in hotel rooms with the family. Yeah. After a while, we got to know each other. Um, I had an arrangement where I wouldn't release any footage until he was done being president or done running for president. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result, I think they felt very free to just be who they were. They weren't worried I was going to take something and use it for political gain or financial gain during the campaign. Yeah. And the result was this film. You know, you touched on they were free to be themselves and obviously the, the criticism of Mitt Romney throughout his campaign was that he wasn't being himself. And I think that we see someone who we never saw during the campaign in his film. Did you have that feeling or do you not? Do you feel like, you know, this, he's, he was consistent through? And Well, I, I think that I think that, that what you say is probably true. Mm -hmm. um, there was a disparity between, well, I know it to be true because I've had friends that consumed Mitt Romney publicly while I was making this movie and then a couple of them helped me edit the movie. Mm -hmm. And they were shocked by what they were seeing. And um, I, I think that that disparity probably exists for every presidential candidate. Mm -hmm. um, maybe what's unique about Mitt is the more you hang out with him and the more you get him in these vulnerable moments where his hair's down and... Uh, um, you know, he's irritated or annoyed. Strangely, he's actually more likable. Um, maybe that's not true for the rest of us. If you were to film me in my private moments, um, I, I, I don't become more likable. I, it, but, but in the case of Mitt, that was definitely true. Mm -hmm. That wasn't something that was my intent. I was sort of just trying to film uh, the most vulnerable, candid moments that I could without any agenda, trying to persuade anybody about whether he'd be a good president or not. And I think that kind of had a charm to it in and of itself. The footage is very apolitical, and so I think people can access it in a way that they wouldn't if I had an agenda behind the film. Right. Did you have no sense of that? I mean, obviously you were so inside it, but you had no sense of what perception was outside? Did you ever have a moment of trying to, you know, comparing and just going, I don't understand why this isn't translating? No, and I, I, well, I was never uh, frustrated by it. I, I um, or just like quizzical, like like why is this happening? Yeah, I think it's I, I, no. I think it's true for all of us. I don't think there is. I don't think Mitt Romney has this unique problem of being himself in public. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I think there are some politicians that have this certain air where they are more comfortable in their own skin. I think there's a certain phoniness to campaigning mm -hmm. that some people can kind of just pull off. Mm -hmm. they, there are these contrived moments in which you're supposed to seem comfortable and they're incredibly awkward. Um, and I think Mitt Romney doesn't do well in those moments right. uh, where somebody else, uh, I think somebody famously who's great in those moments is Bill Clinton. Um, I just, in watching politics, he could take these incredibly um, awkward, strange moments where you're in a diner meeting somebody for the first time and there are a hundred photographers filming this event and he can make it seem like it's the most natural thing. It's probably the most real moments of his life, you feel like. It's like he's more real under that circumstance. He has a gift for making it feel like, well, this is the real Bill Clinton. Yeah. Where I think Mitt Romney and, frankly, most of us would be really, this is really strange that we're doing here. This is an odd moment. And, yeah, for whatever reason, I think for whatever reason, he pulls those moments off less than, than yeah. maybe a Bill Clinton does. Which touches on an issue of what does it take to run for president? Who 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 wants to be president? What sort of person? And then what do you have to do to yourself in order to sell yourself in, in a media environment? Did you gain any insight through this process? I kept asking myself that question because 
in the proximity I had to the Romney campaign, you would rub shoulders with other campaigns, mm -hmm. first with other Republican candidates. Mm -hmm. And you would meet them and you'd think, well, what is it that gave this person the idea? Rick Santorum, for instance. What, what, suddenly, what suddenly got into him thinking, oh, I should run for president? I should um, be the most powerful man on the yeah, world. Yeah, I should, that's world. right. I should run, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think for anybody to think that they can be president is fairly strange. Uh, and yet somebody has to be. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in the case of Mitt Romney or Rick Santorum or Barack Obama, I, I'm not quite sure. That, that Probably that answer changes for all of them. Right. And I think they're taught to give you the answer, well, why did you decide to run? And all of them, well, it's for the good of the country. We felt called to do this. It's mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's true, but is it true for all of them? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. You know, the other criticism was of, of, of Romney was that he changed his or presented his opinions in a certain way during the primaries right. you know, to appeal to a, the base, the party base, a further right-wing base, and then try to switch. He, he's a very analytical guy, just watching him in the film. He's self-critical. Yeah. Um, and yet, there is a moment where he doesn't, he doesn't engage, or he doesn't seem to understand why people see him as this flip-flopper. And that, I don't know, did, did you feel it's a blind spot? Or do you think he's, is, were his things consistent, but just his opinions consistent, but just... In other words, how could, be, how could he be so unself-aware given that he has he changed exactly, these positions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the footage that I have too, yeah, you see those moments, he's troubled by it and even, um, yeah, maybe two things. Um, I think he has to know mm -hmm. that, that making the shifts that he did to run um, in the Republican primary, particularly in 2008, that that was going to be a potential criticism. But I think what also may have been puzzling was he's not the first person to change his mind uh -huh. on a few things. Um, you know, Barack Obama, Guantanamo Bay mm -hmm. comes to mind. Oh, uh, John McCain on uh, the evangelical right comes to mind. Mm -hmm. um, so I think what may have confused him is why is this label sticking so hard to him? Mm -hmm. Was it that the positions that he pivoted away from, were they more radical than the others? Mm -hmm. I think he, him and his staff could probably cite you examples that they weren't any worse than other candidates, any changes they had made. So why, why was he being called to the carpet? Mm -hmm. I don't know. The whole thing to me seems like this strange dance that people have to do. Yeah. You have this nomination, you got to appeal to your base, you emphasize the most conservative or the most liberal parts in order to get that base, mm -hmm. and then there's this traditional hard pivot to the middle. And we all know this, anybody that follows politics knows this, right. but we all participate in the dance. Right. And we either accept it or reject it. I think what your film highlights, I think, in relief to our experience of that past campaign, is this inherent flaw in the system, or how this. Yeah. And there's even someone in there saying, you know, this is why good people don't run. Yeah. For yeah. Office. Yeah. I, um, Not that you need to have an opinion on that. Just, you know, it just, it, this is what's coming out of the film to me. Like, you, you paint a portrait of someone who. I think would have had a, a very different reception from people. Yeah. Had they, and which I think they even said during the campaign, like, if you really knew the real Mitt Romney. Yeah, I think that's fair. And I'm not sure what to solve that, because as I look at it, I'm not sure who's at fault. The campaign, all those people that were working on Romney's campaign, they've worked on past campaigns, and they've seen campaigns fail mm -hmm. because of one small word or one strange image wearing, you know, riding a tank, you know, or being on a, a windsurfer. They, they've all seen very small decisions, very small mistakes grow into something that can end a million dollar endeavor to become president, a multi-million dollar endeavor to become president. Yeah. So I, I, can, I don't fault them for being nervous about allowing a filmmaker like me to be around and film mm -hmm. or not wanting the film, not wanting the candidate to be more candid. Right. Um, and yet because of that impulse, I think we throw the baby out with the bathwater, especially in the case of Mitt Romney. There was, a, in my opinion, a, a guy that was much more attractive behind closed doors than he was in front of him. It seems like transparency and openness would have been uniquely beneficial to him as opposed to you know, many other candidates like to keep things very staged. Yeah, I don't know how unique it is. I wonder if the more we get to know anybody, you develop a sense of empathy and as a result, you like them better. And, and in this day and age of politics, it appears to be very helpful to have people like you. Which is the essence of filmic storytelling, right? I mean, put, put a human being up on yeah. screen 40 feet across, or these days two inches across. But. Yeah, I think if you do your job right as a filmmaker, you're trying to 
people are become empathetic with your main subject. In our film, I don't think we persuade anybody that they should have voted for Mitt Romney no, no, no. or that they shouldn't have if they did. Um, but I think you do walk out of it with a sense of, oh, this is more likable than I thought. Yeah, and, and I think, for, again, for me, something about what one has to do and change your, what, how you have to present yourself to run for president and maybe what we're losing. Uh, you know, left, right, Democrat, Republican. It's yeah. just more a question of, there are, I'm sure we all have candidates every year, every four years, we go, he's never going to win, she's never going to win, but if only... Well, didn't, don't you find this strange too that here are these people by almost any other metric we would consider them successful regardless of your political stripe sure. you would say well look here is this individual that was the editor of the Harvard Law Review and really came from nowhere to uh, really make a fairly remarkable life for himself mm -hmm. and as soon as he decides to run for president half the country is going to hate that person mm -hmm. That person is a community activist. Who, who is this joker that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, look, here's a guy that came and by all accounts um, was on the cutting edge of some fairly significant um, financial ways of, well, just what he did with business was incredible. And then what he did with the Olympics was remarkable. Regardless of your political stripe, you go, well, this was somebody who, he clearly has some leadership chops and, and if he just chooses not to run for president, the obituary that, that is written for him when he dies will be very flattering. Now, the lead line on his obituary is the fact that, uh, you know, whatever that brand is of being a loser running for president of the United States. Out of curiosity, your, your prior film, New York Doll, is also about someone who, I believe, converted to Mormonism. Yeah. Is this a coincidence? you have an interest in, are you affiliated with the... I'm Mormon. Oh, you are. Yeah, so these are probably stories that I'm, I, I'm naturally interested in, but more importantly, I just have access to them. Arthur Killer Kane, who we made the movie about in New York Doll, I went to church with him. Huh. Um, Mitt Romney is, if you're Mormon, Mitt Romney is to Mormons what Hank Greenberg and Sandy Koufax are to Jews. So, <laughs> this is, you know, you just have, you're naturally interested yeah. in this. The trick then becomes, all right, I have a job, first and foremost, as a documentary filmmaker. Shut up. Don't ask any questions. Film. Do your job. <laughs> film. And um, I had uh, uh, two very nice Jewish boys helping me edit this movie who, uh, they've been my partners in crime on a couple of other films and um, through, I think, a three-headed effort, we came up with what I hope is a very honest portrait of uh, a man I got to know over six years. It's really interesting. It's Greg Whiteley, uh, Mitt, here at Sundance Film Festival. Thank you so much. Thank you for having for me. For joining. Appreciate no, it. Pleasure. Yeah. Thanks.